In this video, we'll study how to find composite function from piecewise defined functions. Now, basically, there are two methods. One of them is graphical method, and the second one is algebraic method. So, we'll study these two methods with three graded examples. Now, this first example is we are given this function fx, which is defined as minus 1 plus mod of x minus 1 when x lies between minus 1 and 3. Now clearly fx it is a continuous function and we have this mod x minus 1. Now root of x minus 1 is 1, rightmost plus this is minus. So when x is less than 1, it takes a negative value and when x is greater than 1, it takes a positive value. So we can write this function fx as now for this First interval, when x lies between minus 1 and 1, we have this minus sign here, so it will be minus 1 and then minus x minus 1 and then we have the second interval where x lies between 1 and 3, so it will be this minus 1 plus x minus 1. So basically this function fx is defined as minus x when x lies between minus 1 and 1 and it is x minus 2 when x lies between 1 and 3. Now we look at our function gx. Now gx is defined as 2 minus mod of x plus 1 when the value of x lies between minus 2 and plus 2. x plus 1 has a critical point at minus 1. This is plus and this is minus. So now we can write this function gx as now first we have this interval when x lies between minus 2 minus 1 now it is 2 and then in this interval this is negative so minus minus plus so it will be this 2 plus x plus 1 and then we have from minus 1 to 2 now here it will be positive so it will be 2 minus x plus 1 now gx is basically x plus 3 when x lies between minus 2 and minus 1 and it will be 1 minus x when x lies between minus 1 and 2. Now we need to find f of gx and g of fx. Now first we will find f of gx using graphical method. So we are going to use graphical method and we wish to find f of gx. Now basically f of gx is f and then gx. So essentially values of x will go into this function g and then value of gx will go into this function fx. Now in this graphical method what we do is first step is we draw the graph of gx. Now gx is x minus 3 when x lies between minus 2 and minus 1. So between minus 2 and minus 1 this is x minus 3. Now we put x as minus 2 this value is 1 and if we put x as minus 1 this value is 2. So this is a straight line. So this function is x plus 3. Now for this next part it is also a linear function. So at minus 1 this value is 2 and at 2 this value is minus 1 and at 0 this is 1. So this is 2, then 1, then 0, and then minus 1. And here this definition is 1 minus x. Now there is a definition change at minus 1. So we'll highlight this minus 1. So first step is draw the graph of gx. Now this graph is defined between minus 2 and plus 2. And there is a definition change at minus 1. Now the next step is draw horizontal lines at boundaries of definitions of fx. Now boundaries of definitions of fx are at minus 1, 1 and at 3. So what we will do is we will draw horizontal line at minus 1. So we will draw this horizontal line 
at minus one. We'll draw a horizontal line at one, and we'll draw a horizontal line at three. And in addition to it, we'll write definition of f x. Now, when x lies between minus one and plus one, definition of f x is minus x. So we'll write minus x in between these two lines. And when x lies between one and three, this definition is x minus two. Now we'll mark all those points where these lines they are going to intersect the graph g x. Now they are intersecting at this point, and at this point, and at this point. So we have already marked this point. Now this is x equals zero, and this point is x equals two. So now we'll start writing the definition of f of Gx. Now, first definition is between minus two and minus one. So when x lies between minus two and minus one. Now, in this case, since both the functions f x and g x they are continuous, we need not bother about this equality sign. We can take it with this definition, or we can also take it with the next definition. Now, in this interval, definition of g x is x plus three. And this definition will go into this x minus two, so it will be this x plus three minus two. Now this next interval is between minus one and zero, so it will be this minus one x and zero. Now in this case, definition is one minus x. Now this one minus x, it still lies in this interval. So here one minus x will again go to this x minus two, so it will be. This one minus x minus two, and then we have this third definition when x lies between zero and two. Now in this case, definition is one minus x, but here graph lies in between these two lines. So here this definition will go to minus x. So it will be this minus and one minus x. So basically, f of g x will be. X plus one when x lies between minus two and minus one, it'll be minus x minus one when x lies between minus one and zero, and it will be x minus one when x lies between zero and two. So this is our graphical method. Now we'll come to algebraic method. Now, before algebraic method, we write f x and g x again. Now, f x is minus x when x lies between minus one and one, and it is x minus two when x lies between one and three, and g x is x plus three. When x lies between minus two and minus one, and it is one minus x. When x lies between minus one and two, now again we'll find f of g x. So we we'll write f of g x. Now in this definition, we'll replace x with g x. So it'll be this minus g x when g x lies between minus one and one, and it'll be g x minus two when g x lies between one and three. So for this f of g x, we have defined everything in terms of g x. Now this g x itself has two definitions: x plus three and one minus x. So what we'll do is now we'll expand it in four parts using definition of g x. Now first we'll use this definition x plus three. So it'll be this minus, and then g x is x plus three, and then we'll write minus one when g x is x plus three less than one. Now here we have to use and because this condition it must be satisfied for these values of x. So 
together with this condition we have to take into consideration domain of x also so it will be this minus 2 x and then minus 1 now we will put this x plus 3 in this second definition so it will be this x plus 3 minus 2 and then 1 and then it will be this x plus 3 less than equal to 3 and again where x lies between minus 2 minus 1 now next definition is 1 minus x now we will put 1 minus x in this first one so it will be minus 1 minus x and then minus 1 1 minus x is less than 1 and here the condition is the value of x must lie between minus 1 and 2 and then this definition will go into the second part so it will be this 1 minus x minus 2 when 1 is less than 1 minus x is less than or equal to 3 and minus 1 is less than x is less than or equal to 2. Now this what we will do is we will first solve these intervals. Now this is a minus 4 is less than or equal to x and this is less than minus 2 and here it is x lies between minus 2 and minus 1. Now there is nothing common in between these two conditions so here there is no intersection of values of x possible so this definition it is not possible now if we look at this now if we take this 3 then it will be this minus 2 and then x it will be this 0 and here it is minus 2 x and minus 1 so in this case we have this common interval between minus 2 and minus 1 so now we write this f of gx and the first interval where it is defined as between minus 2 and minus 1 and here this definition is simply x plus 1 now we will solve this now if we subtract 1 it will be this minus 2 less than or equal to minus x less than 0 and if we take this minus sign then it is between 0 to 2 and here it is between minus 1 to 2 so the common interval between these two is value of x lies between 0 to 2. Now here this definition is x minus 1 and finally here it is 0 and then minus x and then 2. So between minus 2 and 0 and here it is from minus 1 to 2. So if we take intersection of these two intervals it will be between minus 1 and 0 and here this definition is minus x minus 1 so that is the definition of f of gx using algebraic method now once we have this definition of f of gx we can draw its graph now when x is minus 2 this value is minus 1 when x is minus 1 this value is 0 so this is x plus 1 now when x is minus 1 this is 0 and when x is 0 this is minus 1 so this is minus x minus 1 and here if we take x is 0 it is minus 1 and at 2 this value is 1 so that is the graph of f of gx now clearly this function is continuous in minus 2 to 2 and it is not differentiable at these two points where we have these corners so not differentiable at x equals minus 1 and x equals 0 so this is how we can write composite functions from the two given functions fx and gx now we'll draw the graph of g of fx and here i'm just going to use graphical method now for g of fx it is g of fx that means value of x will go into f and value of fx will go into g so here we'll have to draw the graph of fx so first we'll draw the graph of fx now this fx is minus x between minus 1 and plus 1 so at minus 1 it is 1 
and at plus one this is minus one so that's the definition of fx between minus one and plus one so this is your minus x and then at one this value is minus one at two it is zero and at three this is one so that's the definition x minus two now there is a definition change at one so definition changes at one and then boundary values are minus one and three now we'll draw horizontal lines at boundary conditions of gx so we'll draw a horizontal line at minus two so it'll be this minus two and then at minus one and then we'll draw a line at two now when x lies between minus two and minus one definition is x plus three so here we'll have x plus three and here when x lies between minus one and two it is the one minus x now it intersects only at one point and this point is already marked so here we just have two definitions so if we write the g of fx now this first interval is from minus one to one so when x lies between minus one and one definition is minus x and it will go into this one minus x so it'll be this one plus x and then next interval is from one to three so when x lies between one and three here the definition is x minus two and it'll still go to one minus x so it'll be one minus x minus two so this function will be one plus x when x lies between minus one and one and it will be three minus x when x lies between one and three now we'll draw the graph of g of fx now for g of fx when x is minus one this is zero and when x is one this is two so it is this line one plus x and when x is one it is two and when x is three it is zero so that's the definition three minus x now this g of fx it is continuous in minus one two three that is not differentiable at x equals one so this function it is not differentiable at this point x equals one so we can solve these composite functions either using graph or using this algebraic method now we'll take up the second example now here the question is we are given this function fx which is x plus two when x lies between minus four and zero there is two minus x square when x lies between zero and four we need to find f of fx domain of f of fx and also we need to comment upon the continuity of f of fx now since this is f of fx first we'll draw the graph of fx so we have these x's when x is minus 4 this value is minus 2 and when x is 0 this value is plus 2 so this is minus 2 and this is plus 2 and here when x is 0 this is 2 and when x is 4 this is minus 14 so at 4 this is suppose minus 14 not to be scaled so here this definition is x plus 2 and here this definition is 2 minus x square and there is a definition change at this point 0 and the boundary points are minus 4 and plus 4 now we'll draw horizontal lines at minus 4 0 and 4 so we'll draw a horizontal line at 
minus 4 a horizontal line at 0 and a horizontal line at plus 4 and we will mark these point of intersections so we have this point we also have this point and then we have this point Now we find these points. Now if x plus 2 equals 0, this point is minus 2. If 2 minus x square, it is equal to 0, then this point is root 2. And here this point is intersection of this graph, which is 2 minus x square with this line, which is minus 4. So this point is actually root 6. Now in between minus 4 and 0, definition is x plus 2. So here this definition is x plus 2. And in between 0 and 4, this definition is 2 minus x square. So now we'll start writing f of fx. So we have f of fx. Now first interval is between minus 4 and minus 2. So when x lies between minus 4 and minus 2. Now since this function is continuous, again we need not bother about this equality sign. So here this definition is x plus 2 and this definition it lies within these two lines. So this x plus 2 will go to x plus 2. So here it will be this x plus 2 plus 2. Now this next interval is between minus 2 and 0. So when x lies between minus 2 and 0, again this definition is x plus 2. Now it will go to this 2 minus x square. So it will be this. 2 minus x plus 2 whole square. Now the next one is from 0 to root 2. So when x lies between 0 to root 2, definition here is 2 minus x square and we'll go to this definition. So it'll be this 2 minus 2 minus x whole square. Now this next interval is between root 2 and root 6. So when x lies between root 2 and root 6, here this definition is again 2 minus x square. Now I'll go to this x plus 2. So it'll be 2 minus x square plus 2. Now when x lies between root 6 and 4, we have this definition which is 2 minus x square, but then here definition of fx does not exist. So this is the only definition possible for f of fx. So we can write this as x plus 4 when x lies between minus 4 and minus 2 and this 2 minus x plus 2 square when x lies between minus 2 and 0 this is 2 minus 2 minus x whole square when x lies between 0 and root 2 and then it will be this 4 minus x square and when x lies between root 2 and root 6. Now this function is defined from minus 4 to root 6. So domain of f of fx will be from minus 4 to root 6. Now since fx is continuous, its composition with itself will also be a continuous function. So this function will be continuous in its domain which is from minus 4 to root 6. So this is our graphical method. Now we will solve this question using algebraic method. Now for algebraic method we have this fx which is defined as x plus 2 when x lies between minus 4 and 0 and it is 2 minus x square when x lies between 0 and 4. Now we need to find f of fx. Now f of fx is fx plus 2 when fx lies between minus 4 and 0 and it will be 2 minus fx square when fx is greater than 0 but less than 4. Now we have two definitions of fx. So we will split this definition in four parts. So now we have to write this definition. 
Now first we'll take this x plus 2. So we'll put fx as x plus 2 in these two. So it'll be x plus 2 plus 2. When x plus 2 ties between minus 4 and 0. And this condition which is when x lies between minus 4 and 0. And the next one is 2 minus x plus 2 square when x plus 2 lies between 0 and 4 and again it is true when x lies between minus 4 and 0. Now we have this other definition which is 2 minus x square. So it will be this 2 minus x square plus 2 and minus 4 is less than or equal to 2 minus x square is less than or equal to 0 and here value of x lies between 0 and 4 and then we have 2 minus 2 minus x square whole square when 0 is less than 2 minus x square is less than 4 and x lies between 0 and 4. Now first we will simplify these intervals. Now here the value of x is minus 6 is less than x is less than minus 2 and here it is from minus 4 to 0. Now if we take intersection of these two conditions we will get the value of x between minus 4 and minus 2. So first definition is from minus 4 to minus 2 and it will be this x plus 4. Now for the second one it will be this minus 2 and then x and then 2 and here it is from minus 4 to 0. So here common between the two is from minus 2 to 0. So next one is from minus 2 to 0 and here this definition is 2 minus x plus 2 whole square. Now in this if we solve this we can write this as minus 6 is less than equal to minus x square is less than equal to minus 2 or if we multiply with minus and take square root it will be this x will lie between root 2 and root 6 which lies in this interval. So here this condition is the value of x should lie between root 2 and root 6. Now in this interval value of fx is 4 minus x square. And finally we have this which is minus 2 is less than minus x square is less than 2. So here we will have mod of x is less than root 2. So this is from 0 to root 2. So when x lies between 0 and root 2, this definition will be 2 minus 2 minus x square whole square. Now again, it goes from minus 4 to minus 2, minus 2 to 0, 0 to root 2 and root 2 to root 6. So for this, f of fx domain is from minus 4 to root 6. Now if we look at continuity, we will check continuity at minus 2. So f minus 2 negative, it will be 4 minus 2, 2 and then f minus 2 positive and since equality sign is here, so this is also equal to f2 and f2 positive will be 2 minus 0. So this is 2, so it is continuous at minus 2. Now we will check continuity at 0. f0 negative is also equal to f0 and here if we put x as 0, it will be 2 minus 4. So it will be this minus 2 and f0 positive, it will be 2 minus 4 which again is minus 2. So it is continuous at 0 also. Now we will check its continuity at root 2. Now f of root 2 negative. Now this is 0, 2 and f of root 2 will be equal to f of root 2 positive and here it will be 4 minus 2 and it is 2. So this function is continuous in its domain. 
So we can find f of fx using graphical method as well as using algebraic method. Now we'll take this third case where we're given this fx and gx and we need to find g of fx. Now first we'll use graphical method. We'll draw the graph of fx. Now when x is 0, this is 1. And when x is minus 1, this is 0. So that is the definition of fx. And since 0 is not included, it will be this open interval. And then when x is greater than or equal to 0, this is x square. So it is x square when x is greater than or equal to 0. So in this case, this fx, it has this discontinuity at 0. Here, there is a definition change at 0. Now we will draw horizontal lines at minus 1 and 1. So we will draw horizontal lines at minus 1 and also at plus 1. Plus 1. Now we'll find their point of intersection. So we have this just one point of intersection here. We have another point of intersection which is given by this value. Now this point is graph of x plus 1 intersecting this line minus 1. So x plus 1 equals minus 1. So this point is minus 2. So basically this point is x plus 1 equals minus 1. And we also have another point of intersection and this point is this graph of x square intersected by pi equals 1. So if x square equals 1, this point is also 1. So here we have three critical points, minus 2, 0 and 1. Now when x lies between minus 1 and plus 1, definition of gx is 2x and when x is greater than or equal to 1, this definition is 3 minus x. Now we will start writing g of fx. Now this first interval is x lies between minus 2 and not included 0. Here this definition is x plus 1 and we will go to this definition which is 2x. So it will be this simply 2x plus 1. Now here says this function is discontinuous at 0. We do not know whether we have to include 0 here or we have to include 0 in the next one. So what we will do is as of now we won't bother about this equality sign. Now we will find definition between 0 and 1. So when x lies between 0 and 1, here this definition is x square and still between these two lines. So we'll go to this definition 2x, so it'll be this 2x square and finally it'll be this x greater than 1. In this we have x square and now I'll go to this 3 minus x, so it'll be this 3 minus x square. So that is the definition of g of fx. Now we have a problem with equality signs. So what we'll do is we'll find g of f0. Now f0 is when x is 0, f0 is 0. So it will be this g0 and g0 is 2 into 0, 0. So we have to include this equality sign at a point where definition of g of fx is 0. So if we put 0 here, it will be 2. And if we put 0 here, it will be this 2x square. So we have to include this 0 here. And in the same way, we will find g of f1. Now, f1, it will be 1. So, it will be this g1. And g1 is this 3 minus x, which is 2. Now, if we put 1 here, it is 2. If we put 1 here, it is 2. Now, since it is continuous at 1, we can put this equality sign anywhere. So, that is the definition of g of fx. Now, we will solve this using algebraic method. So, here we have to find g of fx which is 2fx when fx lies between minus 1 and plus 1 and it will be 3 minus fx when fx is greater than or equal to 1. Now fx has two definitions. So first we will consider this definition. So now we we'll write this as 2 and then x plus 1 
when x plus 1 lies between minus 1 and 1 and the condition with that definition is x is less than 0 and here will be this 3 minus x plus 1 when x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1 and here the condition is x is less than 0. Now next definition is x square so it will be this 2x square when x square lies between minus 1 and 1 and x is greater than or equal to 0 and then it will be this 3 minus x square when x square is greater than or equal to 1 and x is greater than or equal to 0. Now we will solve these conditions. Now this is minus 2 less than or equal to x less than 0 and this is x is less than 0. So intersection of these two conditions is this interval. So g of fx will be Two x plus one when x lies between minus two and zero. Now, if you look at the second condition, here the condition is x is greater than or equal to zero, and here x is less than zero. Now, there is nothing common between the two intervals, so this is not possible. Now, if you look at this third one, x square is always greater than minus one, and x square less than one is x lies between minus one and plus one, and here x is greater than or equal to 0. So intersection is x is greater than or equal to 0 but less than 1. In this case this definition is 2x square and this third one is x square is greater than 1 that means x is greater than or equal to 1 and x is greater than or equal to 0 that means x is greater than or equal to 1 then this definition is 3 minus x square. So this is the definition of g of fx using algebraic method. So this is how we find composite functions from two piecewise defined functions.